post them there and we will aim to answer them all after the presentation. OK, thank you. Over to you, Paul. Great, thanks. <laughs> um, so Mel's been asking us to sort of organise these uh, these webinars and cover various subjects and I had free choice of what to go for and I just can't believe that I chose grounding, isolation transformers uh, and safety systems. Um, certainly uh, I kind of picked the area which is uh, you know perhaps more one of the dark arts and, uh, uh, and I've made life difficult for myself. Um, but uh, I'm going to have a quick run through. Um, it's a bit of an unashamedly um, kind of technical um, review really and I'm going to apologise in advance in that some of the early stuff is going to be some very simple kind of building blocks as to the protection systems on board and uh, and how they build into um, the requirement for isolation transformers so please do bear with me but just to give you a bit of an idea of really what I'm proposing to cover um, Grounding and, uh, and what we're talking about, I guess, uh, just making sure we get our terminology right. Um, the role of grounding in uh, protecting against short circuits and and, and subsequently uh, the risk of fire. Uh, how RCDs then um, contribute to that safety system over and above uh, circuit breaker protection or fuse protection. The challenges of, uh, of these systems on larger boats and why a transformer can help. A bit of a kind of an overview of isolation transformer fundamentals and really how that then builds into uh, the ways that transformers can uh, contribute towards uh, uh, preventing issues with corrosion, uh, assisting with making uh, it a safer environment for people swimming around a boat, particularly when it's plugged in on shore power. Protecting against lost neutral supplies, either, uh, well, in this case, I'm going to be speaking single phase, so this is going to be uh, really American split phase systems, but it's also a problem uh, with three phase short power supplies coming onto vessels. And then also uh, how a transformer can help you bring more power onto the boat, and that's particularly an issue when we get into the very kind of top end of vessels that are fitting single phase supplies uh, onto their craft. So starting off with um, what is grounding? Well, as I said, I just wanted to make sure that we try and kind of uh, remind ourselves what the purpose of the grounding is and, and, uh, and the way the terms are used. Broadly speaking, what we're talking about here is a connection, a safety ground connection in a marine environment, which is to the water, to the sea, to the, the water the vessel's floating in. And that connection to the water provides uh, a, a reference voltage, which we call zero volts. And it also provides us with effectively an unlimited reservoir into which a fault can dissipate. Um, that earth system then uh, is brought into the vessel and distributed around to extend that safety um, blanket right the way through the vessel and that's done through a protective uh, non-current carrying conductor uh, around the vessel that then is bonded to uh, potentially vulnerable exposed metal parts um, and that forms our, our protective ground system with regards to AC wiring systems. On the DC side of things, DC negative is often referred to as ground, but in reality, it's a, a grounded current carrying conductor in a in a kind of similar way, I guess, to a uh, a neutral wire that's grounded in a conventionally wired European system. And then, uh, and then finally, we use ground for other purposes, uh, generally for um, helping to shield against uh, radio frequency uh, interference and other electrical or electronic noise on the vessel. Um, that, that ground can be done through shielding of cables uh, and, um, and other methods. But ultimately it all goes back to the, uh, the, the sea being the source of that, that reservoir of, uh, of grounding. 
So as I say, I'm going to start very with a very straightforward and, and as uh, please do excuse me for that, but I think it's just reminding ourselves of these things helps us to just build up why we um, why an isolation transformer can be helpful. So I'm going to just use a really simple example of a, of a, a supply coming onto a vessel and linking to a, uh, a an outlet. Um, we've got three conductors, live, neutral and earth and the earth is bonded to the neutral in the marina supply and we can see on the left hand side the winding of the of the dockside transformer, uh, the utility transformer and then on the right hand side we've got a back box of a, of a metal enclosure um, where we um, also connect the the earth and that's our so that's our example um, and I'm going to introduce a fault so the first fault I'm going to introduce is a short circuit between the live and neutral conductors. Um, and that short creates, uh, creates a, a short circuit. And we've got 230 volts or 230 angry pixies now in the live wire and they've got a direct route back to source, which they will take. And that short circuit will generate uh, an overcurrent, which will cause the circuit breaker to trip and for the fault to be cleared. So uh, I'm just going to then introduce a second type of short or fault, I should say, and this is one now between the live and the uh, metal enclosure. Um, so again, we've got 230 angry pixies. They need to go somewhere and they've now got a path through the metal enclosure back down the protective earth conductor back to source. And once again, that current is uh, able then to trip the circuit breaker and to clear the fault. But if we introduce a fault between the neutral and the earth, um, nothing happens. And that's because uh, we actually haven't got any angry pixies there. We've got no voltage. We've got zero volts in the neutral because it's grounded here on the left hand side. Uh, so there's no potential to drive any current in this circuit. And in fact, even if there was any, there's no circuit breaker in that circuit. Uh, so that means that that fault doesn't get cleared and uh, and remains in place. So uh, we we can see that circuit breakers protect against faults, but not all types of faults. And that, I guess, is part of the reason why the standards call or certainly ISO 13297, which is uh, uh, I think what the majority of UK boat builders use for their standard for sub 24 metre vessels um, is that that standard calls for the whole boat to be pr protected with an RCD of no more than 30 milliamps. So just then looking at how that RCD further enhances the, uh, the protection system on board, we've got the uh, the same kind of circuit <clears throat> now with the load being applied, um, obviously a very bright light drawing two amps, um, but over and above the circuit breaker, we have a, an RCD that is, um, uh, has got the live and neutral conductors um, flowing through it. We introduced the same kind of fault uh, between the neutral and the earth as I uh, gave in the earlier example. We now um, will potentially see a very small amount of current uh, flowing down the uh, earth conductor and that's generally going to be driven by the fact that we're going to have volt drop in these cables because we've got a load and it only takes a tiny amount of volt drop to create a potential difference that very small potential difference will drive a tiny amount of current and in this case I've illustrated it with 100 milliamps flowing back down the earth wire which now means that only uh, 1.9 amps are flowing back down the neutral and in turn that creates a uh, an imbalance within the RCD that's greater than 30 milliamps and causes the RCD to um, uh, to trip and to clear the fault. So um, really the RCD is, a, is, a, is an important part of the arsenal of circuit protection on board but that doesn't come without challenges and principally those challenges manifest themselves when you're on shore power. So most 
marine ashore power supplies are protected by an RCD and that's absolutely as it should be because we've got a big bit of dangly cable going over the pontoon and across water and onto the boat which needs protection in its own right. But certainly with larger boats one of the challenges we face is that the cumulative earth leakage of all of the equipment on board can often exceed the 30 milliamp rating of the shoreside RCD and can lead to um, uh, to nuisance tripping. Now we can kind of deal with that on board the vessel because we can break the circuits on the boat into groups and we can protect each of those groups with a 30 milliamp um, RCD um, and that still means that we meet the whole boat requirement as, um, uh, as re required by the ISO but just because we can actually solve the problem on the boat doesn't remove the problem from off the boat because the shore supply RCD will, will continue to see this cumulative uh, earth leakage and that can cause this problem of, of nuisance tripping. Um, we, can, we can basically overcome this problem with an isolation transformer. So particularly for larger boats, it starts to become a, a, a really valuable tool. <clears throat> so, I'm just going to cover the kind of principal reasons why we're uh, why, why we're going to look at isolation transformers before uh, going through their, their functionality a bit. So the first thing is uh, galvanic corrosion, um, and you can see here on the photograph on the right hand side that galvanic corrosion can be uh, a real challenge for for, for marine applications. Um, we just kind of covered it previously: cumulative um, earth faults. Um, building up in this example here we can see we've got a kind of a, a group of four RCDs so the, the consumers on the boat have been split into four groups but without an isolation transformer prior to this uh, that's really going to have no uh, benefit on the single RCD on the uh, shore supply that, uh, that feeds the vessel. And then finally uh, the safety of people swimming in the water around the vessel. So if we kind of try and first of all think about first principles as to what the isolation transformer is doing, I'm going to use the analogy of a very simple battery cell to kind of illustrate how the problem manifests itself. So within a simple battery, we've got, uh, we've got um, two plates that are um, of different nobilities. That generates a, a potential difference between the two uh, plates of the battery, but uh, nothing really happens until we connect uh, a circuit. These plates are sat in, a, in an electrolyte um, and then once we once we connect the two plates externally, in this case through this lamp, uh, we get the, the potential difference between the plates driving a current through the lamp into the other plate and then that current it returns the return path is back through the electrolyte from uh, from one plate to the other and that um, that causes material to be eroded off one plate and deposited on onto the other now in a battery that process can be reversed we can recharge the battery the um it, the, it's not the same when you are looking at galvanic corrosion which is a, very much a one-way process so how does that analogy kind of translate into what we see uh, in a marine application? Well, we've got a very similar set of circumstances. We've got uh, two dissimilar metals. We've got steel pilings within the marina. We've got uh, underwater uh, stern gear, etc. on the vessel. We've got sacrificial anodes on the boat that are bonded to that, um, to that stern gear. So we've got uh, we've got dissimilar metals. We've got a conductive fluid and electrolyte, which is our seawater. And again, uh, really, and this, this is the same kind of example. We have a potential difference here, but nothing happens until we complete the circuit. And the way that we complete the circuit is by uh, connecting the shore power earth through to the vessel earth system. And that indeed completes the circuit and it allows this galvanic corrosion 
uh, to take place, the eroding material off the vessel and uh, depositing it onto the uh, shoreside underwater components. And as I said before, that's a one way traffic, um, so uh, a, a real challenge. Um, so really, how does, a, how does an isolation transformer help in that regard? Well, it, it helps by completely breaking the earth connection between the shore system and the system on board. And we can do that safely because of the, isolate, the isolation that the, the shore power provides. Um, so uh, what we have uh, here is we've got our dissimilar metals as before, but our incoming earth supply terminate safely uh, and into an, into an isolated connection within the transformer, normally to a shield that runs between the primary and the secondary windings of the transformer. And then we've got, we've got our com completely standalone earth system on the vessel, which in this case is bonded to the output or one side of the output windings of the transformer to create a kind of conventional European live and neutral output on the transformer. But actually, uh, the great advantage of the transformer is that we can configure this output to whatever you as a boat builder want to have. So if this was a vessel that was going to the US and you wanted to have a split phase 120 volt, zero 120 volt supply, then we would connect the earth to the center tapping to create a neutral and then have a, a four wire system around the vessel. And this transformer also now means that the output side of this transformer is um, uh, immune to reverse polarity uh, issues on the input side. We create our polarity by the way that we configure the output side of the transformer. So that in itself uh, reduces a lot of risks as well. Um, and yes, effectively just confirming that the, the earth protection is is provided now by the sea, uh, which it would be, of course, when the vessel is underway as well and potentially running on generators. So how does this kind of impact that potentially describes how we uh, how an isolation transformer can help with galvanic corrosion? But what about the swimmers? Well, the safety of swimmers around boats is uh, is an issue. There have been numerous fatalities reported. Thankfully, numerous relative to the number of boats, I guess is probably not the way I describe it. it, it it's relatively rare, but uh, significant enough to still be a concern. You need a quite a convoluted set of circumstances for it to happen. And generally, uh, from what I've seen, it seems to be a, a combination of faults that, that ends up causing the problem. So the first fault is that we generally have a high resistance fault prior to any onboard protection between a live conductor and the earth. So that's kind of the first thing we see. The second thing is we see a, a poor earth path back through the shore power cable, generally a corroded pin on the shore power cable. Uh, so something within the boat system or potentially a bad earth uh, on the shore on the marina installation itself. And under these circumstances, if this is a, a high resistance fault, we're not getting enough current flowing to trip a circuit breaker, but we still are getting a leakage. And that leakage, in this particular case, the only remaining path, if it's not got a good earth path through the shore cord, is through the water. Uh, and particularly when you're swimming in uh, brackish or freshwater conditions, uh, the human body is more conductive than the water that you're swimming in. So electrical current uh, being lazy will take the line of least resistance. And that means then that this fault current flows through swimmers and back to shore rather than flowing uh, through the water around them. And that's really where that kind of whole danger stems from is from that uh, from from that set of circumstances. Now, now clearly we can uh, we can protect against that in a number of ways. Uh, the first way would be to uh, check and maintain your earth connection. 
uh, check pins on your shore power leads, make sure there isn't any corrosion. Um, but let's be realistic about it. No, no one ever does this. And I think we need to work on the basis that if you expect the worst uh, and plan for that, then, um, then you're going to be coming up with a much safer system. Uh, we particularly see issues with uh, or reported issues with old twist style, the kind of uh, NEMA style connectors where they've got uh, very small contact areas. They're quite vulnerable to, to corrosion and the action doesn't provide the kind of um, the, the sweeping and cleaning uh, process that you get with a pin and sleeve type connector. Um, so they are a particular vulnerability um, uh, and certainly more kind of modern arrangements like the European um, IEC 60309 uh, connector is, is, is a much more reliable in, uh, connector inherently. Um, the next thing that would prevent the problem happening is the shoreside RCD. But of course, that's out of our control. That's where wherever the boat ends up is wherever it plugs in. And therefore we are trusting to an unknown party at the point where we put all of our faith in the shore side RCD. And then the final uh, possibility is mounting the whole boat RCD as close as possible to the inlet so that the amount of vulnerable wiring on board the boat is as small as possible. But that becomes more and more of a challenge as the boat gets larger and larger because of the problems with cumulative losses forcing and uh, multiple RCDs or just through the amount of space available. So, you know, potentially, uh, potentially this is a, uh, a good solution for for a smaller boat, but it, it really starts to run out of, um, of viability as you go up the size range. So if we look at the same fault happening with a boat with an isolation transformer, um, where we've got this high resistance fault between the transformer live and earth, really what we see is that the fault path is back to source and that's going to be uh, from the live into the earth wiring, which is going to run around the vessel and ultimately has to come back to the secondary side of the transformer. So that fault will not find its way into the water uh, and through our intrepid swimmer. Um, we still have got a vulnerability on the primary side, but because now the transformer is isolating the shore supply RCD from uh, the cumulative earth leakage on board, then we've got a much more viable opportunity of putting an RCD in uh, immediately adjacent to the inlet. And even if we can't do that, we are absolutely keeping the size of the system and the complexity of the system that needs to be, um, that we need to be extra vigilant about as small as possible. And that extra vigilance could be through mechanical um, conduiting and, and physical protection, um, uh, and by keeping those cable lines as short as possible. Um, yeah, I think I've just kind of covered that, you're putting the uh, RCD close to the inlet. So overall, an isolation transformer can make a, a terrific difference to the, um, the, the safety of the swimmers around a boat. And I guess ultimately, those swimmers around a boat are likely to be the relatives and friends of, of our joint customers. So um, we're, we're very conscious to keep them safe. And then um, the third kind of area where an isolation transformer can really help is lost neutral supplies particular well as i say this could either be on a three-phase system um, or an american split phase system i'm really concentrating the, uh, the the presentation today on single phase so i'm just going to concentrate on a american style boats with a a four wire l1 neutral l2 system on board so uh, in this example our zero volts is um, our, 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 sorry, our sensor tapping on our supply is 120 volts apart from the two live supplies. It's sort of kind of a sensor tapped supply. And on the dock side, the earth neutral bond is made onto this sensor tapped 
um, output of the of, of the utility transformer. And that is giving us this kind of configuration on board. And it's very common for the loads on board to be a mixture of two 40 volt loads, which are taken off L1 and L2, and then some uh, 110 supplies, which are taken off um, either L1 or L2 and sharing the neutral. So uh, if everything is good, everything is good, and that's uh, that's where we are at the moment. But uh, if we introduce a fault, and that fault is going to be potentially uh, a completely lost or badly corroded neutral connection, then all of a sudden on board, our neutral conductor is no longer uh, nicely secured 120 volts either uh, side of the two live conductors in the center. Um, and it could be pretty much anywhere and that where it ends up is going to be down to the impedance uh, or, or um, load of the appliances on it on either leg and obviously on this occasion we've got two loads that are mismatched and for the sake of this example I'm going to say that the neutral now is dragged to being only 20 volts away from L1 which means that it's 200 volts away from uh, L2 all of a sudden and uh, there's a kind of an immediate consequence of that which is that you need to be getting yourself down to um, PC world and getting yourself a new TV. Um, so a, a, a very real challenge that can be overcome very simply with an isolation transformer because with an isolation transformer we choose not to bring the neutral on board the vessel. We are only bringing the the two hot wires, the L1, L2 on board into the and bringing that into the primary side of the transformer. And then on the secondary side of the transformer, we are creating our, uh, our um, center tap, which we're going to bond to the earth system on board the vessel. And we've now got complete control of the of the neutral. And we're not reliant on either the marina connection or the um, the, the connection at either end of our shore cords to bring that uh, well really essential neutral conductor reliably on board. And then my final kind of point in terms of what transformers can do for you is, is, is to give the example of the fact that they can bring more power onto the boat. And again, this is really for the kind of the larger end of the market. So I'm going to really be talking about a boat with a, a potential 63 amp cord. And we've got kind of three options really. We can just bring on 63 amp single phase. And if we do that, uh, then we can 63 amp single phase, 230 volts will bring us roughly 15 kVA onto the boat. The first thing I guess I'd point out is that in Europe, um, 63 amp uh, single phase outlets are as rare as hen's teeth. So the likelihood is even if you fit this 63 amp cord, you're going to be um, only able to connect to a 32 amp out there at best, so you're down to seven and a half kVA. So just because you fit the cable doesn't mean you're going to get the outlet in, in the marina. Um, and uh, likewise in the US, if you took your boat over there, you're either going to be getting a, a 50 amp outlet or a 100 amp outlet. So you're either going to not be able to use everything or you're going to be limited by the breaker on the, on the dockside supply. The, the next option is to uh, fit a, uh, a drop down transformer. So this is a drop down transformer that could pick up uh, two phases of a three phase supply. So in this example, if we're in Europe, that's going to be a 400 volt supply. Uh, if you have 63 amps times 400 volts, you actually get near a 24 kVA. So the same size cable a 63 amp three phase um, supply but only using two of the three phases uh, enables you via a drop down transformer to bring 24 kV or a on board um, we can supply those as auto switching versions so in the event that you can't find a three phase connection and you can only get a 230 volt connection it will operate in a one-to-one -one mode and only move to a drop down um, mode if um, uh, if it connects to a three-phase supply. 
So here we've gone from a potential 15 kVA up to 24 kVA from the same size short board arrangement. And then our final uh, option for, uh, for single phase boats is a three phase to single phase transformer. And these can either be uh, Scott Round or Open Delta. Um, we do use power from all three phases. That power is not applied equally to each phase. So ultimately we're limited by the phase that's most heavily um, heavily loaded, but we do sneak a little bit more capacity out of the same size cord. And in this instance, if you um, if you use a, uh, an open delta, then you're going to be bringing around about 30 kVA of power onto a boat from a 63 amp 400 volt pedestal. Now that's not as much power as the pedestal could deliver if you loaded all three phases equally, as that would be uh, 45 kVA. But certainly it's another kind of step forward in terms of, of capacity. Challenge with these kind of uh, three phase to single phase transformers is that that's all they can do. So whilst you get more power from this solution here, uh, you get a little bit more flexibility from uh, a kind of a one to one or, uh, or buck um, auto switching transformer because it will allow you to connect to either a three phase or a single phase pedestal. So just running through really the kind of transformers that, uh, that are, are available uh, and that we've uh, we've had the pleasure of supplying over the years. If we start with the simplest, these are just straightforward one to one transformers, 230 in, 230 out. And broadly speaking, um, it kind of gets top and tailed by a 2 kVA transformer 10 amp at the bottom end of the range um, and where possible we supply off the shelf product from Victron. So we have a, a 2 kVA, a 3.6 and a 7 from them. And then beyond that, where they they have um, uh, where their range doesn't go, we, we build our, our own. And generally 24 kVA single phase is the kind of top end of the, of the spectrum. So 100 amp short cord um, capacity. Um, then there are um, dual tapped transformers that allow uh, to be connected either to 115 volts or 230 volts, depending on what side of the Atlantic you are. Great for um, sailboats uh, and small boats that might be going across by Dock Express um, that can live off a 115 volt supply over in the US. Um, these are available as manually reconnectable versions, uh, but we can also supply uh, an auto connecting version of the same kind of transformer, which I, I guess is probably the safer of the two. Um, if you forget to reconfigure it when you come back to Europe, uh, you're going to be doubling your uh, input voltage. Um, so an auto version is certainly something to consider if you want to go down that route. Uh, and then we have uh, our ISO boost range and uh, these kind of fall into two families, sort of US and, uh, and European versions. The US version is really all designed around allowing boats to take advantage of a 208 volt three phase supply in the absence of a 240 volt uh, single phase hookup in the uh, in the marina. And uh, when it detects the 208 volt supply, it will retap and boost that roughly 15% drop in voltage to give you a, a nice healthy 240 volt supply on, on board. The European version of it uh, for the uh, for the lower capacities is really all designed, it's designed all around dealing with uh, droopy voltages in marinas where you might be picking up uh, a supply at the very end of a pontoon and suffering from volt drop and uh, our version provides 10% boost. In both cases it automatically um, switches between the, the boost and the one-to-one -one ratio dynamically. So if the voltage recovers um, as, as boats leave the dock, then we'll then drop back into a one-to-one -one mode. For larger vessels, we do a bucking transformer. Uh, so this is a drop down transformer. Uh, and this is uh, really the, 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 uh, the unit I described earlier, where if you are 
have access to a 400 volt supply, then it will allow you to bring that on board and drop that down to 230 volts. But if you can't access a 400 volts supply, it will just switch through on the one to one mode. So perfect for sort of larger yachts where um, uh, understandably people want to stick to a single phase electrical system on board. Um, it just doesn't warrant going to three phase, but uh, where single phase shore power hookup is uh, just not going to bring you enough, vessel, um, enough power on board the vessel. Um, just to make life a little bit more challenging for myself, I've decided to put animation and a video into the uh, into the presentation. So you, if all works well, you won't hear from me for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of our over, of our ISO boost range with this uh, short video. The Energy Solutions ISO Boost Transformer provides a cost effective and reliable solution for isolating and managing shorelines. It provides all the features of a normal isolation transformer as well as providing a boost function to manage the volt drop on heavily loaded shorelines or for coping with a 208 volt phase to phase supply. So why install an ISO boost transformer? It eliminates the risk of galvanic corrosion. It ensures safety for swimmers. Its dual inputs mean you can cruise between the US, the Caribbean and Europe and the boost feature compensates for any variations in dockside shore power voltage, so boat equipment is protected. The units are perfect for new build yachts and also as a direct replacement for Charles Industry ISO boost transformers. This is because they have the same dimensions and the same functionality, with options of either 12 kVA or 24 kVA units. So you can simply do a straight swap, keeping installation and refurbishment costs low. So just, um, just to kind of wrap up, really, we've got a couple of accessories around isolation transformers that um, that may be useful to some people. So the first is the, the fact that we uh, we can parallel up the output of isolation transformers. Um, the nature of an isolation transformer is such that by paralleling their outputs, uh, we, we don't uh, create the situation where shore side RCDs will trip. Um, they, both of the primary sides are closed loops, so we don't see a kind of an imbalance on live and neutrals by combining the outputs. But we still have to do it very carefully because we have to make sure that both supplies are of the same voltage, that they're in phase with one another before we uh, can join them up. And equally, we need to be able to uh, disconnect them if we detect that one of the shore cords um, has been pulled out because otherwise you've got some male pins on the end of a lead somewhere that would be live. So it's not a not a straightforward thing to do, but uh, it it provides a real benefit um, because the alternative is to try and group your loads on board the vessel uh, into two separate bus bars, um, each run off uh, its own shore called connection. And the, the challenge always is to try and divide those loads equally across those two uh, buses. And if you can't, then you end up with one cord being overloaded and one cord being overloaded, and then the whole thing falls over like a deck of cards. Um, with these combiners, we can also combine dissimilar sized shore cords and load them in proportion to one another. Um, and this kind of little schematic here just gives a bit of an illustration um, where we've got uh, um, a bus A with 25 amps worth of load on it, bus B with 50 amps worth of load on it, so 75 amps overall. In a conventional split bus arrangement, we'd be applying 25 amps of load to our 100 amp cord and 50 amps of load to our 50 amp cord. Um, so we'd be uh, absolutely at capacity uh, on one cord and only at a quarter of capacity to the other. But by combining the two cords together and loading them in proportion, the two cords are seeing the cumulative 75 amps here. This is challenging me with my marking up. 
and that 75 amps is then being divided equally across the two shore cords. So they're both at 50% loading. Now clearly, if uh, if these loads uh, uh, continue to increase, we'd be really needing that um, uh, the ability to spread those loads evenly to avoid having one of them trip out prematurely. Uh, so I've illustrated it with dissimilar shore cords, but that works absolutely the same with either 250 amp or 2100 amp or 263s or however ha however it's configured. Um, and then very, very quickly, last kind of uh, couple of things is we do some custom units as well. So I've not really talked about three phase here because I've really wanted to stick to single phase uh, ISO related stuff, but we absolutely do three phase transformers. Um, and we do onboard and dockside transformers. And this rather poor photograph on the right hand side that um, looks like something out of Doctor Who with its cords coming out the side is a split cabinet system we did for uh, a 200 kVA dockside supply for some fishing vessels up in Scotland, uh, allowing them to come into port and turn off their, their generators rather than to continue running them in port and, uh, and contribute to local pollution. So uh, we've absolutely got an appetite for doing odd things as well. So hopefully uh, and it, uh, that's giving you a bit of an overview of, uh, of, of the various aspects of isolation transformers and reminded us all of why we've ended up with those um, with those solutions. Um, hopefully you haven't got any two questions that are too difficult for me, but I'd be happy to uh, do my best and deal with any questions that might come in. That's wonderful. Thank you, Paul. Um, yes, we've got a couple of questions just here. So first one was, how do we decide which ISO transformer size we need? Well, generally, my, my kind of suggestion is that you prioritise uh, the size of your shore cord. Um, well, the size of your shore cord is going to, is going to uh, really dictate things. Um, if you've got a 32 amp shore cord and you're expecting to operate that in Europe at 230 volts, then you're just effectively combine, uh, multiplying your voltage and your current to give you the, um, the KVA that you require for your transformer. Now that is more difficult when you're getting into vessels that could realistically be being dock expressed from one side of the Atlantic to the other. So um, generally what we kind of see at that point is that um, boats that are being built in Europe tend to be kind of fitted with a 63 amp capability, but know that when they're, when they're in the States, they're going to operate off 50 amps. Um, but if that really starts to become too marginal, then all of a sudden we have to leapfrog up to 100 amps. So it, it's, it, it, it's a bit of a combination of the shore cord, your cruising ground, and then really where that kind of sits with your expectation of what the loads are on board. A bit of a dark art, I'm afraid. OK, that's perfect. I've had a couple more come in. Um, so that one was, hello, what is your opinion on diode isolators for simple installations? Well, they, de they definitely play a part. So galvanic isolators um, are, uh, are, are a, um, a viable way of going. I think my first thing is that they're a badly named product because they're definitely not an isolator. They are really just a, a blocker, a, um, a, a opposing direction diodes and capacitors. I think the real challenge with um, galvanic isolators is, uh, is really how they might fail. With an isolation transformer, if you have a failure on the primary side of the transformer, you just don't get power on board. If you have a failing between the windings, it tends to go to the, well, it does, it fails to the shield, which is grounded back to the shore power side of things. You get, you get a, a failure mode, which is uh, understandable and, and safe. With a galvanic isolator, the, the challenge is knowing whether it has failed and it, then in what mode it has failed. So if it's failed open circuit, you no longer have an earth protection on board via your shore cord, which is back to the safety of swimmers. And if it's failed short circuit, then you've lost your galvanic protection for the hull of the boat. Um, and whilst uh, units that are built to comply with the ABYC code call to have um, kind of fail safe operation. In other words, if they fail, they 